All right, so I think this might be the first time on the channel that I am featuring a Zenith K7000A. This is a complete K7000 clone, a Wells Gardner K7000 clone. The only real difference is the flyback is completely different, uh, but as far as the board layout and everything, it's basically exactly the same as a K7000 from Wells Gardner. But this is the Zenith version, so We'll go over this in more detail, but what's going on here is it's been reworked already, it's been capped and stuff like that, uh, but it's got this vertical fold-over issue. Uh, the top of the screen is kind of, it's, it's, you know, if you go too high and it flips itself over, if it goes high and then goes like this, uh, everything is flipped upside down and folded over. So insert coins, three up, so they take the top part of the screen and it flips itself over like this. That's what's happening here. So. We gotta try and figure out why this is happening. So I think this was happening before and somebody capped it to try and fix it and didn't fix it. And you think that it might be a 50, 60 Hertz pot, but it's not, um, or adjustment, I should say. If I, I can turn this, as I turn this, it doesn't really unfold itself. It just makes it go like this. So the 50, 60 Hertz pot is working the way that it's supposed to. It's just for some reason, it's flipped around on itself. So yeah. I, I don't know. So we'll have to figure this out. But if you go down here, well, the 50, 60 hertz pot is working the way that it's supposed to. So that's, that's not the issue. There's something else going on here. So we got to try and figure out what this is. So uh, we'll get this off the tube and on the overhead and try and figure it out. Well, in giving this a quick look over, I went through all of the caps and made sure the caps were the right ratings and things. So it has been recapped. So all the caps are correct. However, in doing so, I noticed that the vertical IC has been replaced and some knucklehead put the wrong one in there. Now, I don't know if it's compatible or not. It may, this may be our issue, but someone has replaced the vertical IC with the incorrect kind. Um, I don't know if the part number is accurate. So what we'll do here is I'm gonna try and get it out of here. It looks like, uh, yeah, I can't tell what the part number is just looking at it. So we're gonna we're gonna get this out. I actually have the correct one, the correct one that's supposed to be in there. I gotta get all my junk out of the way here. I'm fairly certain the one that is supposed to be in there is. This one, fairly certain it's supposed to be this one, LA7833. Pretty sure, no, not that one, hang on. Nope, I'm wrong, hang on, this one. I've got some of these that are four specifically for the 7000A. Here, here they are, here they are. This is what's for the 7000A. Okay, so the 7000A uses a specific one, because I mentioned how this is basically a clone of the regular Wells Gardner 7000, uh, but there, except for the flyback, but there are some little differences. And one of those little differences being the vertical IC. Uh, you can see here that there's two holes here at the top for the heat sink and that's what this corresponds to. So the 7000A uses a specific vertical IC and that's what this is. And what does it say on the bag? A AN8821? I can't tell. Um, 5521? But I do have, I just do happen to have two of these because I've run into this problem in the past. And this is the specific vertical IC that the 7000A requires. It is AN5521. What does this one say? Yeah, Alpha November 5521. So this is what we'll put in here in place of this one that they put in here that's not supposed to be in there. I'm assuming it's not supposed to be in there and it's not compatible, but let me get this one out of here uh, and we'll look and see what the part number is on it and I'll get one of these installed and then uh, we'll try it again. 
All right, so original suspected incompatible vertical IC is out. The correct one is installed. I only had one screw. I'll have to see if I can find another screw later down the road, but for now, for testing, it'll be sufficient just with one screw in there. So got that changed out. It's good to go. Soldered in. The bottom of the board is super clean. Uh, so let's uh, hook this back up and see if this one being in there was the cause of our problem. If we zoom in, we can look at the part number here and see maybe... Uh, it looks like 1378 Hotel, PC 1378 Hotel. I can't tell if that's an A at the beginning of that, but it it's an NEC, you know, whatever the first letter is, PC 1378 Hotel. If you can see that there, so... Uh, I'm not sure if it's compatible or not, but I know that this one is that for a fact so let's just hook it up with this one in here and see what it does if it still has the same issue at least we know we can rule that out as the problem and troubleshoot further so let's get it hooked back up and see what it does now okay so we're hooked back up and again it looks precarious here because we're using my u5000 here tube here for testing so but it's totally compatible with all this so anyway so we're all hooked up uh, the supposedly incorrect one is sitting there which is my, my hypothesis here is that that's the wrong one and that should work fine now with this one, so let's find out. Here we go. One, two, three. All right. And what do we get? Well, what do you know? Let's decrease our size and vertical position. Do, do, do. Raise it up. Oh, and our 50, 60 hertz pot needs adjusted, but, well, yeah, it's folded over down here, so let's adjust that. And there we go. Vertical size right there. And voila. success. Well, there we go. Incorrect vertical IC. I, I assume at some point in the past this thing developed a vertical collapse and in the process in the process of troubleshooting the collapse they put the wrong uh, incompatible vertical IC in there. So this might be the quickest repair to date on the channel. Um, you know. So now that we've got this fixed with the correct part installed which is all it was, let's go over some of the uh, idiosyncrasies and differences between the 7000A and the standard K7000. All right, so with this fixed now, let's go over some differences here. So like I said, for all intents and purposes, the 7000A is the same as the regular 7000, but there are some differences. So on the regular 7000, uh, you've got this uh, 1000 microfarad capacitor here next to the flyback, but on the 7000A, it's not there. They've got it back in here, right next to the uh, 2200 microfarad cap that's in there. And they relocated R91 and D14, I think it is, D13. So normally you've got D13, D14, R91, and R92 back in here, right there, on the regular 7000. But on the 7000A, they transplant R91 and D13 from next to the flyback to back here. So back in here, they've got R91 right there, and D13 is down there below it, right underneath that yellow wire is D13. So D13, D4, uh, D13's over here, D14's over here, R91 is right there, R92 is right there. Uh, so they have to relocate those components because this flyback has this giant extra winding here. Uh, you know, the footprint is much bigger, has the extra box here, the giant uh, windings in there. So because of that type of design, they had to relocate uh, D13 and R91 to back here. And then D18 is vertical here. Instead of having D18 flat against the board, like on the standard 7000, right there... They've got it sitting in here mounted vertically right here. So 
Yeah, I mean, otherwise, from that point, there's C38 and the width cat or with the coil and all that stuff. It's all that stuff's the same. You still have R89, R101, uh, R96, uh, things like that. It's R103, R104. So all this stuff in the power circuit's the same, but they mount D18 vertically, move that capacitor there, move D13, uh, move R91. Uh, little idiosyncrasies like that, but for all intents and purposes, it's still the same. The parts are all there. The parts are all the same. It's just there's a couple of them in different locations. Uh, the only real drawback to getting a 7000A versus a standard 7000 is the flyback. They're unobtainium. Nobody makes them. You can't uh, find them unless you get one from a donor 7000A. And to the to date, nobody has retrofitted the 7000A. Retrofitted? Retrofit. No one has retrofit the 7000A to use the standard 7000 flyback. Now, uh, you know, hypothetically it should work, but you'd have to figure out how to do it because it's completely different. It's completely different. This one, you see here that this one goes around, you know, if you look at it from the bottom, it goes around clockwise. Well, this one goes around counterclockwise. Not only that, there's more connections and there's these three windings here that have to go off here to uh, what I assume is uh, it's a film cap in there. So it's a film cap and these uh, other wires here that run to this con this contraption here. So these extra three pins here come down to these two connections, which are these two wires here that run to this thing. So there's a whole nother level of science going on here with this flyback. So nobody has really, you'd have to, there's not really any way you could feasibly do it because you'd have to mount the flyback facing backwards on the 7000A. You would have to do some major surgery or mount the flyback facing, it's facing this way now, and have to face backwards because of the way it's, I mean, I don't think it's ever gonna happen. It'd be a monumental task, and that's because someone, yeah, someone's gonna have to make a channel called uh, Mike's Professional Arcade Monitor Repair to be able to do something like that. So, uh, anyway, I mean that's really about it. Otherwise, it's the same as a seven, regular 7000. So, just wanted to go over some of those things. And we do know that the vertical IC is specific to the 7000A. So, if you have one of these with collapse, you have to get the uh, specific correct one. And I've gone over the part number for that. So. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, this might be the quickest uh, repair on the channel to date. So, uh, I guess that's about it. Otherwise, uh, I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. And I guess one last thing I do want to point out is the HOT is a bit different. Uh, they mount it here with this type of clip. So, you just take the screw off and you kind of wiggle the clip off and the clip will snap off and it's held on with this clip. There's no screw. There's no, normally you've got the screw that's through the HOT there. Also the, the voltage regulator. But on this one, they use these clips with the screw to hold, the clip holds the, holds it up against the heat sink. And like I say, you just take the screw out and the clip will snap off. It's under some tension, so it might take a little bit of effort to do it, but it just snaps off and you can change it out. Now, some of these 7000 A's have, they have the HOT epoxied in place. Like when they put the epoxy over the, the uh, pots, I've seen these where there's epoxy on the legs for the HOT. So in that case, you gotta cut it off and re-solder it on to the cutoff legs uh, because you're not gonna be able to get the original legs out because they put a bunch of epoxy in there. So if you come across one like that, you're gonna be hating life, but um, it is possible to do. So anyway, that's the last thing I wanna say. Again, thanks for watching. Um, there's more content coming here shortly, so stay tuned for that. And uh, we'll see you then.